First things first, rest in peace, Uncle Gil. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Creative Differences Podcast. I'm Dallas, a.k.a. Black Magic, and I'm still wondering what's going on with Ezra Miller. I'm Colin, and I would highly recommend, if you know that you're probably not going to see a movie, read the plot summary on Wikipedia, because every movie ever sounds like it's not going to make any sense if you just read the words of what happens. It's so much fun. That does sound like fun. Like, what I've started doing now is going on IMDb and just looking at the synopsis tags. Mm. Because I can't remember what movie it was that we were talking about. But I looked at them and I was like, yo, they're describing porn. But it was a regular movie. Anyway, wasn't, welcome back. Oh, what's up? Wasn't that the movie with, like, Anne Hathaway and Jake Gyllenhaal or something? No, that one's about drugs, not sex. But I think it was the... Was it Sleeping With Other People? I think it was Sleeping With Other People. Jason Sudeikis and I know her name, Alison Brie. But that's fair. Like, you know, it's all white. It's all white romance. Anyway, welcome back to the Creative Differences Podcast, your one-stop shop for movie reviews, Throwback Thursdays, Fancast Fridays, and a number of other pop culture-related items. As you can tell, I'm saying that thing that Demi usually says, she's kind of here, kind of not, for reasons I won't go into due to HIPAA compliance. Today, we're talking about Fantastic Beasts and Abbott Elementary. Also, Gabby's not here because she's off somewhere playing with a wand or something. Before we get into the reviews, please like, share, and subscribe, or the author of your favorite childhood books will turn out to be whack. Too late. <laughs> Fair. Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. Um, it's directed by David Yates. He's done some Harry Potter things. I was going to look up what he did, and then I forgot. Harry Potter. It was written by Steve Cloves and What's-Her-Name. It stars... Eddie Redmayne, Jude Law, Dan Fogler, Allison Sudo, Callum Turner, Jessica Williams, Mads Mikkelsen, and Ezra Miller's wild ass. Um, am- David Yates also directed The Legend of Tarzan, starring Alexander Skarsgård oh, and Margot did. Robbie. I forgot about that. I forgot about that movie, but it wasn't, it wasn't bad. It was cool. I didn't like that he fought a gorilla and just, like, lived. Like, that gorilla, double axe handle, slammed him with both of its fists. And he was just like, ah, man, all right, you got me. Like, nah, dog, you should be broken to half. Anyway, IMDb summary. Albus Dumbledore assigns Newt and his allies with a mission related to the rising power of Grindelwald. That feels like a summary for the, like, the series. Yeah. Like, hey, Albus is like, hey, I need y'all to do this thing because I can't do this thing. And then Newt's like, okay, fine. But yeah, That's what Dumbledore does all the time. True. I... You know what? Let's get right into it. I like Dumbledore more in these movies because he's still Dumbledore in the way that he is probably the best wizard in the game. He's the Michael Jordan, the wizard, the last dance, all that. But he would still rather (laughs) delegate his task to lesser qualified people. Well, at least... If I remember correctly, because I didn't see the third one, but I saw the second one, there's like a blood thing where he can't actually fight Grindelwald. So there's a reason for that one. In the original books, though, it's a lot of like, "Mm, I could do this, but. mm." Exactly. But and what I was going to say is that I like him better in this one because these are adults that he's sending into battle. All of the Harry Potter books, he's sending children to do all this stuff. And it's ridiculous. Harry starts fighting evil from 11 years old, and then he never has a normal life in his adolescence you know he's a slave before that basically and then by the time he's 17 he's a fugitive he's running through the streets Dumbledore's trash but when he's sending adults to do his bidding it's not as bad but yes you are right he can't really fight because of the blood pack he's like yo man own bloods I can't fight Grindelwald literally but <laughs> Jude Law's great I like Jude Law he's charming even when he's not being super helpful and kind of vague he's, he's Jude Law we can't we love to see it this movie is better than the last one. So let okay, me, t- let right. me take you guys through my, uh, I guess, journey of these movies. Uh-huh. The first one came out, and I was like, yo, I like Harry Potter. Harry Potter's dope. I don't know if I knew that J.K. Rowling was whack at the time. I can't remember. No, we did not know that she was as whack as she is back then. Okay. So I watched the movie, and I was like, hmm, disappointing. And then the second one came out, and... I had lower expectations, but then the trailer came out and I was like, hmm, that actually might be kind of dope. So I went in and it came out, hmm, disappointing, (laughs) but also like bad. I really did not like the second movie. So this one, I wasn't even going to see, but Kayla, my wife, the love of my life was like, yo, I want to see it. So we we saw it and 
it's not bad. I think okay. it helps that my expectations were in the dungeon where they keep the evil kids, the Slytherins. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it helped to have super low expectations because I went in the movie and it didn't suck. So I, I'm not going to say I liked it, but, you know, I didn't hate it. Gee, I just, like, it sucks that that's where we are <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, because every Harry Potter movie, with the exception of, like, number six, I was like, yo, I'm about it. I like this. Mm-hmm. Expectations are high. Enjoyment is high. We're here. But, yeah, all of these movies are just, they're fine. Um, the story is, it feels messier than it is. I don't know if to say it feels messier than it is because it's very confusing until the end you realize, oh, this is what they've been doing with these things. I can't get into them because spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Mm -hmm. But I do like that they actually worked the Fantastic Beast into the storyline. Oh, did they? I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, I don't know if you read the thing. Because they've always felt like like, an afterthought. Yeah. They're just like, oh, we called it Fantastic Beast. So here's a magic giraffe or something at a circus. (laughs) Meanwhile, fight the wizard Nazis. And Ezra Miller is deteriorating more and more in every movie. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, I don't know if you read the thing about the it's called a killing. It's like yeah, <laughs> which is yeah, chilling, great killing, name. all that. It's like a magic deer or whatever, and it starts the scene. The movie starts with a scene involving that animal, and I was thinking, why are we doing this? And then it became really relevant to the plot. And I thought, oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Got okay, it. that's good. Yeah, so they worked it in. It still feels super disjointed because. Mm. They will do the cute animal humor in a weird way. Like, you know, they have the little klepto thing that likes to steal shiny stuff. And uh-huh, then the sure. little stick bug or whatever that thing is that hangs out in Newt's pocket. Yeah. That's cool. And it's cute. And then we cut to Ezra Miller is paler than ever. And Queenie looks sad and paler than ever. And Mads Mickelson is just pure unadulterated evil in this movie. <laughs> so it's like... This movie was real cute a few minutes ago. And now we're with the wizard Nazis and they're killing things and people. And I don't, it's going to feel disjointed. I think that's just going to be the tone of the movie because mm-hmm. they called it Fantastic Beast when they should have just called it Dumbledore is gay and the guy that he <laughs> likes don't like him like that. Like, I don't know. He's just not that into you. Maybe it would be a better title for these. We're workshopping. Oh, points for representation. Dumbledore does say out loud that he was in love with Grindelwald in this movie. Yeah, I heard about that, that there are two lines in the movie that will very easily get cut for the Chinese release, but (laughs) hey. They were already cut for the Chinese release. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, hey, that's cool. Which is wild because, like, you know, obviously movies can be edited every which way, but I really want to see that version and see what he says because... You know, it's not much of a spoiler. We know when J.K. Rowling was scrambling for representation and said at that random thing that Dumbledore was gay, that Dumbledore was gay. So it's not a spoiler to say there's a scene when Mads was like, yo, you know, why even blah, 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 blah. And Dumbledore's like, because I was in love with you. So I'm wondering in the Chinese version, what did he say? <laughs> like, because we're pals. <laughs> or like, I don't know. But it's not, it's not, I'm not Chinese. Just gals being pals. Exactly. Just. I have a question yes i was hoping you. you would have questions well okay actually no i think i know the answer to this one mm-hmm. there is there's more than one black person in this one right yeah yes 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 all right we got some black speaking of black magic jessica williams is fantastic in this movie i haven't really seen her act much i know that she was on the daily show and she's a comedian mm-hmm but she was great in this movie. She is my favorite character, aside from Jacob Kowalski, because Dan Fogler is the best part of this whole franchise for me. Jacob Kowalski is amazing. He's, like, from a logical standpoint, probably shouldn't be there during a lot of this. Mm, mm-hmm. But, you know, he's ready to scrap, so. Wizards always want to point their little sticks at each other. He's like, I'm going to hit you in the face with this briefcase. So I respect that. I heard that, um, what's her name? Tina got sidelined. I'm very confused by that. They mention her. So uh, the out-of-text reason is that the actress was vocal against some of the stuff that J.K. Rowling said. Oh, okay. Um, I also so, read that it was also because she got COVID at some point during filming, and then it was like a long-term like, oh, version of COVID. Both. That's rough. Yikes. Yeah, I was very confused because they bring her up, and then they show, you know, 
Harry Potter will show somebody in a newspaper like, oh, remember this person? Mm-hmm. All right, bye. But she does pop up in the movie. Okay. It's just, I don't, I don't care I have about her character. I have a question. <laughs> What's up? You brought this character up earlier, and I just want to know, do they continue to ruin Queenie? No, but it is extremely, un- this movie makes the last movie even more annoying. Because remember that she decided, I'm just going <laughs> to. So for those who don't remember, in the last movie, Queenie loves the muggle man, Jacob, no match, whatever you want to call him, non-magic mm-hmm. nigga. Grindelwald is like, yo, in their world, they're racist. And, you know, people can't be with whomever they want to be with. But in my world, you can be with whomever you like, despite the fact that he is overtly anti-muggle. <laughs> and she thinks, oh, you said I can be with anyone I like, including this muggle? I'm going to do that, despite the fact that you want to either kill or <laughs> enslave muggles. <laughs> so she's like, I'm with you. I'm on your side. I'm going to leave the guy that I'm in love with to join you, because you said if I join you, I can be with the guy that I'm leaving right now. So she does that, because they made Queenie an idiot in the last movie. Why'd they do my girl like that? why they know. do her it like so that? so stupid. So in this movie, she's just kind of sad most of the time, because she's, you know, in Grindelwald's in Grindel gang. There's no mention of like Grindelwald doesn't even come and tell her like, yo, we're still working things out logistically. We got paperwork or anything like he's not like, yo, I'm gonna let you see your boy it's soon. I got you. N- it never comes up. It's just you're here now. You're on my team. I want to hear that nigga's name again. Like it doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't say like, I'm doing all this, but I can still be with my Jacob when Grindelwald wins the war or anything. It doesn't come up. And then they see each other. She's like, ah, we can't be together. And it's like, Nick, what? So that was stupid. It was all very stupid. But her character is better because she's not being as stupid. She looks super sad, though. It's rough. Um, I, what's up? Do you want to watch two more of these? I didn't want to watch this one, Colin. I, I'm married. See, that's, and that's the thing, right? Is I feel like, you know, obviously, if you know like i'm in a, cer- a certain social media bubble so i do see a lot of like jk rolling is trash yada yada mm-hmm. don't go watch this movie blah 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 but in general i feel like the excitement for this series has never been really there no i think maybe before the first one came out and everybody's like "Ooh, a new thing based on a mm-hmm. like 40 page textbook <laughs> it's like five yeah. movies out of that but no i don't i don't i don't care about these movies but this is, I, w- I guess, my favorite of the three. I didn't really like the first two very much. Okay. By default. I mean, that's yeah. something. I didn't hate I... it. I don't regret watching it. So I'll say that. Okay. I came out of the yeah, second I... one regretting the time I spent with it. See, that's, yeah. Like, the second one, I was just like, mm, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if it's better than that, cool. Right. Yeah, I, still, I feel like. This one hmm? also hit a box office low for the series. Yes. <gasps> Everyone's over it. We don't care anymore, Joanne. I feel like I should talk about Newt because he's the protagonist and Eddie Redmayne. Sure. It's good at Newt. He, you know, he's awkward. He doesn't make eye contact. He mm-hmm. likes animals. All the same things that he does in the first two are there. Okay. One of my problems with the series, as we've kind of talked about, is that it, it always felt like Newt wasn't really the protagonist. Dumbledore was, and Newt was just along for the ride. Does he have a more active role in this, or is it more of Dumbledore's fetch quests? It's all, it's more of that. Like, because at least when uh, Porpentina, or whatever her name is, was in the movies, mm-hmm. it was that thing, too. You know, we are on mm-hmm. Dumbledore's fetch quest, as you called it. Mm-hmm. But also, I like this woman, and I want to be with her, and she's in the movie, so I have something to mm, okay, okay. motivate me. But she's not really in this movie much, so it's really just, this is Dumbledore. The movie's called Secrets of Dumbledore. Like, this is... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Also, Kayla brought up an interesting point. Why did the parents name one of their sons Theseus and the other one Newt? I don't understand. Like you gave him this warrior ass name, and then you named this little nigga after a lizard. Like, yeah, that's kind of rude. What were y'all doing? Self fulfilling prophecy, right? Now Theseus is, you know, top, a cab or whatever. But then Newt is just, well, I don't know. He's Dumbledore's main man, so that's cool. I think I covered everything. The movie's fine. (laughs) I (laughs) wouldn't. If you like these movies, then I recommend it because it's not very different, except you know it's a different guy playing Grindelwald. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I am wondering what they're going to do with Credence because Ezra is going on a crime spree in Hawaii. Apparently, <laughs> and I'm wondering how Wonder Brothers is going to handle that. But if they also the character might be never mind. That's a spoiler. You know, I saw somebody make the joke that by the time we get to the end of this series, every major role is going to have been recast. <laughs> like, honestly, yeah, maybe you no. Know? They're going to have to flashpoint it. <laughs> and it's magic. You can do that. But boom, we are all using Polyjuice Juice Potion. This is what we really look like. <laughs> but uh, yeah, shout out Dan Fogler. Shout out Jessica Williams. Y'all are the standouts for this movie. Black girl magic is a real thing. I know she's a woman, not a girl. Girl is dismissive, but black girl magic is the phrase. There's nothing I can do about that. Speaking of black girl magic, another thing Colin didn't watch, Abbott Elementary. The funniest show on TV. This is why I really wanted to me to be in this episode because she likes the show a lot more than I do. <laughs> and I like this show, but Demi like loves this show. But anyway, let's talk about this show. Abbott Elementary, created by Quinta Brunson, starring Quinta Brunson, Tyler James Williams, Janelle James, Lisa Ann Walter, Chris Perfetti, and Cheryl Lee Ralph. The summary, like I told you guys when we did the uh, What You're Watching, follows a group of teachers brought together in one of the worst public schools in the country simply because they love teaching. Uh, yeah, the season's over now. So here's my thing. I'm in a weird situation because I, I like this show. I don't have really any complaints about this show. But I don't like this show as much as anyone else who talks about this show. Everyone I've seen mm-hmm. talk about the show adores it. And I don't adore it, but I enjoy it. So okay, it's one of those things where you want to say, yeah, it's as great as everyone says it is. And I don't want to say that it's not. But for me, it's not hitting as hard as it hits for everyone else. Mm-hmm. That all being said, the show is very funny. It's a really good show. The writing is good. The characters are good. Janine, who is the main character, played by Quinta Brunson. I don't know if I said this when we talked about it before, but she gives me like black Leslie Nope vibes. And if you've seen mm, okay. Parks and Rec, you know, Leslie Nope is a white lady. She's friends with Tina Fey. Amy Poehler. <laughs> she's Amy Poehler's character. And she's very, I can handle this. I'm peppy. I'm good at my job. I am dealing with a lot of maybe apathy from a lot of other people, but I am very idealistic and I'm going to get it done. Mm. Girl boss, this resonates more for me with a character like Janine because she is working in a public school that is underfunded. She is a black woman in Philly. I'm not a black woman or from Philly, but you know, I get the Mm -hmm. public school, mostly minority kids. That resonates more with me. People compare the show a lot to The Office. But for me, it feels more like Parks and Rec. Hence everything I just said, Leslie Nope, blah, blah, blah. My favorite character is still Gregory. He's played by Tyler James Williams. And he's just the perfect straight man to all of the nonsense going around him. And, you know, someone said, like, yeah, of course you like this character. He's you. And it's like, oh, fair. I get it. I love Melissa, the Italian lady. Like, everything she says is vaguely mobster adjacent. And that's just a fun character to have. Just all the characters, some fun. The janitor, I can't remember his name. I wish I remembered his name. Um, nah, I can't do that to him. I gotta look it up. Colin, do you have any questions yep. about this show while I look this thing up? Not. Really. That's the thing is, like, <laughs> all I've heard about it is that it's like the best thing that's ever existed. I'll jump in on this real quick since Dallas wants me to give a short review on it. I love this show. I don't watch a lot of sitcoms, not because I don't like sitcoms. I very much do. I just have a hard time keeping track of them after a while. So I don't really get into them, but I love Abbott Elementary. I think that it's very relatable. I think that the subject matter, whether you've been in public school or if you have kids that go to public school, the issues are very relatable and and recognizable. Like Dallas said, I love the characters. I think they're all so funny and so well written. And I think also just like Quinta Brunson, who is the creator of the show and who plays Janine, I think her sense of humor just has always appealed to me because I have been like watching her like sketches and stuff online for years now and I've always found them super freaking hysterical so yeah I love this show I think it's like for me right now it's the funniest show on tv and I just think that like a lot of people are hyping it up for the same reason that people hype up Ted Lasso is because it makes them feel good Mm, and like it's a feel good show yeah and there's not like a lot of particularly mean humor in it like maybe ava because ava's kind of a mean person mean humor is her thing (laughs) but it's it's mostly just ava and ava's one of the most hilarious characters on the show though and everyone reacts to ava 
and her 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 whole thing with the reaction like when character when the show is more mean spirited like always sunny most of the main characters are mean like that and mm-hmm. the side characters kind of react to that like yo what's wrong with you guys but all the main characters just see that as normal but in this show Ava is mean trifling incompetent if we're being honest like always out of pocket things, always out of pocket and everyone reacts to her like yo what's wrong with you so it's a nice change of face it's funny that Demi brought up sitcoms, and I think I I do like sitcoms, but I think a lot of them for me, like network TV sitcoms, fall in this place for me a lot where I like them, I don't love them, I'll keep watching. Because I'm thinking about Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Abbott Elementary and how they're both really acclaimed. And then Young Rock, which not a lot of people talk about, but I really do enjoy it. But none of these shows are going to be like top five shows for me. And I think those shows, being network TV, have to be safer than a show like Atlanta, Ted Lasso, mm, okay, all the yeah. stuff that we're getting in different places. It's restricted in what you can do. Yeah. It's really funny that you say that because I just saw a video um, this morning, actually, of uh, Donald Glover saying that he was actually really jealous when he watched Abbott Elementary the, yeah. because of how how great it is, like how great of a show it was. And he was so impressed by the quality of the comedy on it, seeing as it is on a network. Yeah. You can't really push boundaries too hard on network television. Um, yeah. And yet this show still is so like, it's so funny and it's got such a great quality to it. Like it's just one of the great shows. Like you watch it and you're like, yeah, this is great. Even mm-hmm. if you don't think it's the most amazing show ever, you're like, this is great television. Yeah. I think, yeah, we talked about that in either our most recent episode or one before it, because it was from the shop, LeBron James show that they talk about, they talk in a barbershop. Ain't nobody getting their haircut. He says, like, yeah, I was really jealous. And she was like, no, Donald, I'm jealous of you all the time. And it was just really funny to see, like, two black showrunners and creators just big each other up like that. I was like, oh, this is dope. But, yes, I did watch that. It was fantastic. Oh, Zach Fox, Janine's boyfriend. His name is Tariq in the show. He might actually be my favorite character. <laughs> He's so ridiculous. If you guys know anything about Jack Nah, not Jack. Zach Fox and his style of comedy. This is the perfect character for him to play. Like, I think I brought up last time when he was performing at the anti-drug rally in the school. And one of his lines, because he's a rapper, of course he is. One of the lines is, somebody try to give you drugs, punch him in their face. And he's rapping to a bunch of small children. <laughs> but there's another, uh, in the finale, they go on a field trip and he's one of the chaperones. Because Ava doesn't really want to go through the channels to get proper chaperones. So she just takes whoever's there at the time. Okay. Yeah. And his way of keeping track of the kids is a call and response. He says, when I move, you move. And the kids say, just like that. And he's like, all right, you guys are all here. And I thought, this nigga's going to lose the kid. Minor spoiler. At some point, they do think a kid is missing. And he's... Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> they're like wait do we have everybody and he says oh wait and he says when i move you move and the kids who are there say just like that and he says oh yeah you missing one there should be more bass in that <laughs> <laughs> yeah he goes you missing a background singer you missing a bass yeah. background singer you missing the background singer that should have more bass in it i was like oh my god this is really working for him but he was right they were missing one but yeah he's great. also you were talking about the uh the janitor mr johnson yes my i completely forgot uh william stanford davis who plays mr johnson he's just so great old like stereotypical old black man janitor (laughs) he's just i can't even really describe all the ways that he makes me laugh but he's really funny kayla has seen a few episodes of the show and in every episode he's her favorite because that guy's great but yeah great show i look forward to season two which it already has been renewed for so yeah gang gang black tv we love to see it um colin any you don't have any comments you didn't watch the thing any follow-up nope. questions on either of the things we talked about before we get into another section that you're not going to do talk about? No, I don't. See, it's like I would have questions about Fantastic Beasts, but they'd mostly be spoiler questions. So Fair. We can get into that after because, mm-hmm. yeah, they do a whole bunch. Not a whole bunch, but like there's a there's like a Maury, you are not, you are the father situation going on. It's a whole thing. How do we have time for that? I thought Wizard... Okay, whatever. How do we have time for anything, Colin? Um. Anyway, moving on to what you've been watching, Colin. Do you have anything? No, I'm not. I figured. 
All right, so I was trying to figure out what I was going to talk about, and I realized mm-hmm. that for the most part, I need Gabby here because she's watching a lot of the same things I am. But Gabby's mm-hmm. never here, so nope. if she's not here next week, we're going to do these things without her. And <laughs> I don't think Demi has started the new Young Justice episodes yet. No, so, I haven't. Yeah, so. maybe tomorrow. now might be a good time. I will. Yeah. Time. Um. True. Right. You ain't going nowhere. So I'm going to talk about a comedy show I went to last night. Oh, okay. Yes. Black Magic, like me. It was called Black Magic Comedy at the Pasadena Comedy in Pasadena. And I went because our boy, Marcellus Samuel, shout out to Marcellus. He was one of the comics. And I've seen him a few times. He's consistently hilarious. He is consistently the funniest person in any lineup that he's in. Marcellus, if you're listening, big ups to you. I told you all this last night, but I'm telling you again. Yeah, it was a fun show. It was the first of these shows that I've seen that pretty much everyone was black, Ooh, okay. except for the host, ironically. Hmm, they got like the whitest host they could to balance out all the blackness, which <laughs> that's, a, that's a method. I respect it. But yeah, it looks like the lineup was Keenan Baker, Marcellus, our boy, Kill, Theodric, Justin Lane, Moha, Ruben Warren the second, Denise Livingston, and Willie Mack. Marcellus was great. You guys know he's funny. You've seen him. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about this other dude named Willie Mack real quick because he went up there. He's very funny. And he looked super familiar to me, but from like okay. eons past. And I'm thinking, did you go to PCC with me? Why do I know you? And I mm-hmm. realized this nigga was on BET. Oh, Demi, you may have seen. Do you remember the show College Hill? Yes. I never watched it, but I know what you're talking about. Okay. So College Hill was a reality show where BET took a bunch of black college students, some from America. I want to say Atlanta, but. Maybe I'm just thinking BET, Atlanta, I don't know. And then some from the Virgin Islands. And they put them in a place, as you do with reality shows, and reality show hijinks ensue, but black, Nix was fighting, a woman got stabbed with a stiletto. It was wild. But this dude was on that show, and that's why he's familiar to me. But the reason I want to talk to you about him is because one of his jokes heavily involved the Craigslist personal section. Oh, Oh, we're just... back to that again? Yes. And audience, you guys don't know, <laughs> oh, but no. the last time they were here, after we recorded our podcast, we talked about the Craigslist section, and I talked about how I used to read it for entertainment because it was super entertaining, the Craigslist personal section. They have since gotten rid of it, but you know, people have found workarounds, going misconnections. You get all the entertainment you need. To me, it kind of looked at me like I was crazy, like I was the one posting all this nonsense. <laughs> you Because... Yeah. <laughs> Because you just like, it's one thing to bring it up and be like, hey, did you ever go through that? And then you just went on it and were just going, well, going deep. Like, yeah, I yeah. was highly entertained. It was Reading great. All sorts of, and it was just terrifying. It was terrifying, but it was great because I thought that when they took off the personal section, I wouldn't be able to find it. Like, not find that, but like find any of these in unhinged posts. Right, but now content. they all just move them to misconnections. And it's great. But this guy told a joke that I'm not going to tell because that was, it's his material and I'm not a comedian. But he talked about the plumbers on there. And you guys remember mm, the, do you yeah, need your yeah, pipes yeah, clean? Yeah. Do you need your pipe service? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, yo, I just had this conversation. With, <laughs> I wish that to me and Colin were here. And I couldn't wait to tell you guys about that. Oh, my God. That's eerie timing. Right. But, man, public service announcement. If you're ever just bored on the internet, go on Craigslist and look at the misconnection section. It is a wild time. But, yeah, great comedy show. Marcellus is on Instagram at Blue Moon Lichen if you want to find him. He has another show. If this episode comes out before Thursday, the 21st, I think the 21st is Thursday. Yes. He'll be at Pasadena Comedy again at 730 for Angel and Friends. So go check our boy out. Shout out to Marcellus. All right. Colin doesn't watch things or do things. So we're moving on to our mm-hmm. news section. All right. Colin does do things. He just doesn't like to talk to us. So That's not true. And yet. (laughs) And yet. You've said nothing. Trailer tracking. We got a trailer. We haven't had any trailers to track in the last couple episodes. Mostly because I haven't really been looking for them. Mm -hmm. But Stranger Things Season 4 got a trailer. All right. That did come out. Yeah. Woo! Colin, do you still watch Stranger Things? No. I haven't watched it since Season 1. And for no good reason. I like season one so much, and then it's I so, just didn't. You liked it more than I did. With it. Yeah. You had a shirt that said, yeah. what about Barb? Yeah. Watch the show. What a time. <laughs> um, like, I've seen all of it now. Anyway, 
season four, it looks dope. The kids are all about 25 now, so <laughs> it's just something we got to deal with. They have weird hair that people keep bringing up. What's the, the little boy that went missing? Will? Will, I think. They won't give him a normal hairstyle. They just keep giving him the bowl cut. He's, I was going to ask if he's the bowl cut one. He's the bowl cut one. It's, can we just give him a fade, please? <laughs> Are there no black barbers in Hawkins? I imagine there aren't, but I don't know. The black kid, He Caleb's... doesn't live in Hawkins anymore, though. Wait, did he move? Yeah, he moved to California. His mom's one owner writer. Okay, I can't remember which kids move which way everywhere. Oh, they they definitely got black barbers in California. Like, he might be in the OC or something. But, I don't know. We could find this boy. Get him a fade. Maybe that's ultimately the mystery of this series is why he keeps the bulk up. <laughs> something in the Upside Down changed him. That's the strange thing. But, yeah, the trailer looks dope. Honestly, I didn't really need to watch the trailer. I know I was going to watch season four. I'm going to watch it either way. It's coming out in two parts because that's the thing Netflix does now, which is why I'm still not done watching Ozark because they haven't given me part two yet. But, you know, I'll take it however you're going to give it to me. Netflix, you know how we have a life-hate relationship. relationship. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm excited. I'm excited. I love this show. But also, uh, when I watched the trailer, I was like, yo, this big bad is a big nope for yeah. me. <laughs> Um, and then Colin sent us an article about the big bad this season being a lich from Dungeons and Dragons, uh, which is pretty cool. In the time since Stranger Things started, I have become mm-hmm. an indie fan and oh, I've yeah. become a player as well. And in that time, I've also become a fan of Critical Role. And apparently in one of their campaigns, Vox Machina went up against the very same villain in oh, their wow. campaign. Oh, which interesting. Is- pretty cool and i'm currently in the midst of watching the vox machina campaign so it'll be interesting when i finally get to that point nice yes i do remember colin saying that i was gonna ask the demogorgon is that a DD thing too i believe i don't so. know actually because in the show they're playing and they're like it's a demogorgon but i don't know if that's a real DD thing or not but i know in the show it's part of it my nerdiness goes to different nerd sections of nerd it seems nerd. to demogorgon just seems to be just a general like mythology thing okay so, yeah, it probably is in D&D. They have a lich in uh, Adventure Time. He's voiced by Ron Perlman. Super scary, super dope. <laughs> One of the things I remember about that show. Um, but, yeah, I like this villain. It looks cool. It can talk. I, I was kind of getting tired of just, like, they looked cool, but the big, like, rah. It's like, all right, we did this three times. But this one is like, oh, you, you got, sounds like you got thoughts and a voice. You got some stuff to say to us. Vecna. Is that his name? Or their yeah. name? That's their name, yeah. Shout out to Vecna. Probably not shout out to Vecna. He's probably going to do something evil. But yeah, that's Stranger Things. Colin, any thoughts? Uh, Maybe one day I'll watch it. Please watch it. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, that's trailer tracking. More news. The reason I started this podcast like I did, we have to say rest in peace to Gilbert Gottfried. First oh, things first, rest yeah. in peace, Uncle Gil. Yeah. That's why I said that, Colin. Mm, okay. I could tell that you were confused. Yeah, the man with one of the most recognizable voices in Hollywood has passed away. It's weird, like, I didn't, <laughs> obviously I don't know this man, but it's just like, yo, he's right. always been that, you don't, apparently he was battling an illness, and his family announced mm-hmm. that he had passed away, he was 67, but man, you just, you never expect, you never expect him to just go. He was Iago. Yeah, plus, like, 67, I mean, I guess that's getting old, but he didn't seem like he was that old, so, you know, it's not one of those, like, oh man, well, they lived to be 90 like okay it was gonna happen but like this kind of came out of nowhere it felt like for the people who didn't know he was ill obviously yeah but you know it happens like that a lot like people will be battling an illness Mm -hmm. that we don't know about because it's not our business right and then when they pass away it's whoa like obviously the big example is chadwick because we didn't know he was sick Mm -hmm. but yeah shout out gilbert Gottfried. prayers to his family thanks for all of the amazing voice work thanks for one of my favorite aladdin songs (laughs) <laughs> yes i'm the i'm the okay we need to get into the the term disney adult what does that mean is it just an adult who likes disney because it seems very uh, i pejorative. think it depends who you ask okay. um because some people use it in a derogatory sense some people don't because you have the people who like disney but then you have the people who are like all about disney and okay. it's like they're at the parks all the time and they collect all the things and they you know so it's like is that a disney adult yes but then yeah so it kind of it, it varies I'm just like, I, I like Disney. I'm an adult. 
I don't want to be well, shamed like, for it. Well, it's also weird to talk about liking Disney given how much they own. So it's like... Right. We all like Disney now, bro. They own ESPN. <laughs> it's kind of inescapable. So I think Disney adult is a, a separate echelon of like, you're into like the brand of Disney and the magic and all that. You're right. Disney, not. animation, Aladdin, all these things. Mm -hmm. But I was going to say, like, I'm one of the Disney adults who hasn't really seen a lot of the older sequels. So like when Demi brought up that song, I don't know what she was talking about because I haven't seen Aladdin 2 or 3. Yeah, I used to love all three of the Aladdin movies. Don't judge me. I just was an Aladdin <laughs> girl. So Okay, listen, listen, listen. I can't speak to the second one because I really don't remember it, but the third one? Yes. So loud. I understand that the animation, <laughs> you know, kind of got worse, but like that's a budgeting issue, honestly. And like yeah. I still had a good time. Yeah, that's all that matters. I just want to have a good time. Also, another shout out to Gilbert Godfrey because because of him, I know how to say the name Mr. Mix Ya Spitlick, who is a Superman villain who is like an interdimensional imp. And his name Love is... that character. I like him because of Gilbert Godfrey because in the Superman animated series, he played him. It's M-X-Y-Z-P-T-L-K. And that just looks like you slammed your hand on a keyboard. <laughs> but yep. in his episode, Gilbert Godfrey spells it out like syllable by like mix he turns into a blender and then yeah spit lick oh got it also he was the dentist in the fairly odd parents he also was on a uh, cyber chase i don't know if anybody used to watch that show but i did and i learned a lot about triangles and a lot of information as a kid from that show i love i loved that show so much it was a great show you have all these shows that I've never seen or heard of. Like that Ghost Cyber Rider Chase show you told us about? was a great, like, educational kid show. And I think I also used to watch it. Mind you, I had a brother who was five years younger than me. So mm, okay. I was still kind of watching younger kid shows at, that, at the age of 10, which is how old I was when Cyber Chase came out. But Cyber right. Chase was dope. But yeah, sorry to all of the older people who expected us to bring up, like, his SNL run and all the things that he did when we were too young to be Gilbert Gottfried fans. <laughs> But yeah, this is stuff I mean, that... you could have just said, like, Affleck. You went a bit further, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, you know. All the stuff that makes him, that, like, you know, made me love Gilbert Godfrey. Rest in peace. We miss you. Prayers to the fam. On to happier news, at least for Demi. Brie Larson is in Fast and Furious. I just want to say that it doesn't matter how much you guys hate Fast and Furious, we still stay winning, so... <laughs> Do people hate Fast and Furious? Those movies make so much money. Yes, people just, oh my goodness. Twitter was like, there was just so much hatred for Fast and Furious when that news came out. And it was like, we're, why, can, can we just have fun with our last two movies, please? Leave us alone. Colin, I'm going to tell it to you like this. Anything that makes that amount of money, there are a lot of people who hate it. Like, there are a lot of people who love it, obviously, because they make so much <laughs> money. But Fast and Furious, Transformers, Marvel, Disney. Mm, gotcha i see people hate on everything yeah i like brie larson i'm kind of apathetic about fast and furious but i do like what they do for their fans just the pure joy of nonsense i'm with it we're having a good time and we have two more movies left and we got brie larson and jason momoa for them so like yeah we're having fun wait there's two i thought it was going to be 10 and that's it uh 10 and 11 are uh, part one part two. Oh, all right Y'all have fun. Vin Diesel posted a very nice picture on Instagram of them laughing together. The caption is too long for me to read right now, but just know it was very nice and heartfelt. He says, welcome to the family, in all caps, which I thought was great. That is news for the fast fans, fast fam. What do y'all call yourself to me? Uh, fast both. Family? I think we're the fast fam for the most part, though. The furious furries? No, not that. Um, we're not that. Oh, There's no furriness involved here. anywhere. <laughs> anyway... Greta Gerwig is being tricked into casting POCs. Stop <laughs> saying that. <laughs> Here's the thing to me. I told myself that when Greta Gerwig starts casting people of color in her movies, I will stop this fictionalized, one-sided, unrequited beef that I have with her. But I, it's just so much fun. I can't stop making the jokes. <laughs> I want to say... So that our audience knows, because this fake beef has been going on for so long. <laughs> I think that Greta Gerwig is a fantastic director and writer, based on what I saw from Little Women. I really enjoyed that movie. So, yeah, I'm probably going to see whatever she does with Barbie. And this cast is fire. 
Yes. Um, I've heard good things about Greta Gerwig. I've not seen any of her stuff because, you know, it's just so white. But not this time. So we got Simu Liu, America Ferrer. I'm just naming the people of color because that's why this is newsworthy. Mm-hmm. Alexandra Ship, Issa Rae, freaking like I said, it's white. Um, Kingsley being a Kingsley been a deer. We have a lot of people, but what's important and is shoot tea. Yeah, oh, wait, who's that's the sex education? Yep. Yeah. Also, apparently, uh, is Ritu Arya in this movie to me? She is, according to IMDb. Yeah. Look at you, Greta. And so is Ariana Greenblatt. Yes, I love her. I love her ever since I saw Love and Monsters. She's great. Also, there are a bunch of dope white people in the cast too, but you know, starting with Margot Robbie. Yeah, they're you know they're always in Greta Gerwig movies. That's not newsworthy. They but but they also they put my favorite Hollywood doppelgangers in this movie, and I'm super excited about that because I want to see if they're actually going to do something with that. Like the fact that Margot Robbie and Emma Mackey are in the same movie together, and people for the last four years have been like, "Are they the same person?" is hilarious to me. I do wish more movies would like make fun with the these actors look the same, but also if you look at the cast for like. Oppenheimer, there's probably a whole lot of overlap. <laughs> Bunch of white dudes. Um, yeah, but they're not going to do anything fun with that. Barbie is where you can have some fun. No, you can't have fun with Oppenheimer. Yeah, shout out to Margot Robbie, who we theorize is actually casting this movie. But if Greta <laughs> actually did choose these people, shout out to her. You know, we'll shake hands. Our beef is over. Yeah, How never too late to yeah. change your views. Never too late to change your views. Uh, speaking of casting and white people, Percy Jackson has found. They're Percy Jackson. And it's Walker Scobell, whom I love now because he was in The Adam Project. I now have and to go watch The Adam Project because I love Percy Jackson. <laughs> yeah. This is an easy one because if you want to go find out more about this kid and his acting, I think you only need to watch The Adam Project because he doesn't really have any other credits as far as I know last time I checked. So just watch that movie and you know what he's... I'm seeing a lot of people say that based off of his role in The Adam Project, he's going to be very good as Percy. Oh, good. He's a good actor. I don't know a lot about Percy Jackson, except for the fact that he has a very black name. Uh, Percy's <laughs> very snarky and quick-witted. Very smart, for the most part. He, he's smart when it comes to being witty. Okay, yeah, that works. That was basically Adam. Colin, any thoughts? You like Percy Jackson, right? I do. Um, I haven't seen The Adam Project. I'm probably not going to see The Adam Project, but like, I am very much invested in this Percy Jackson series, so... I don't know. I, I just, I hope I enjoy it. I think they said they're going to announce Annabeth and Grover sometime soon, in like the coming weeks or something. So that's exciting too. I am very excited about what this series could be, given that the movies were not great. And also because Rick Riordan seemed to have a very clear understanding as to why that movie didn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has such a big part to play in this television series. And also, it's very exciting that Walker himself is a huge Percy Jackson fan to the point of owning a Camp Half Blood shirt and buying a New York Yankee cap because Annabeth has one. Like wow. it's hang okay. He's a huge fan apparently. All right, and what it, and Rick is involved in this, right? Rick Riordan. Yeah, like heavily. And he wrote the pilot. Oh, nice. That's very dope. I love to see it. Love to see it. Cool. cool. They got a Percy. Percy has a black name. Said that. No one seems to ever talk about that. Like, that's a very, very, very black name. Percy is I think it's because his real name is Perseus. Okay, that's fair. I don't know any black people named Perseus. (laughs) Yeah, that's our news. That is our news. We don't have different opinions. I mean, we have different opinions, but we don't have the section that we call different opinions (laughs) because it's dry for us out here. It's quiet. Y'all ain't talking to us. I asked you to talk to us, and then y'all just didn't. I'll see how it is. Whatever. It's fine. Uh, so, yeah, that's all we got for you today. Thank you to our audience for listening quietly from the shadows and not commenting. I would like you to comment, but thank you for listening. Thank you, as always, to Crown Digital, Brandon, and Io for putting us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. To me, thank you for editing. Thank you for putting us on YouTube. Thank you for joining us despite your grave illness. Colin. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for hanging out despite not having seen most of the things we talk about, which yeah. is becoming a pattern. Yeah. <laughs> like last week we had both seen Sonic and everything everywhere. Mm-hmm. So that was good. I think the week before that you just kind of sat there quietly for an hour. Pretty much. Uh yeah. we'll see how next week goes. <laughs> well, next week is the bad guys. Uh. 
Yeah, I'm not that interested. In oh, that and you got to next see... week is the Northmen. It is also the you Northmen. I want to see that, but do I want to make the effort to see that? Is the uh, question. I don't know. Walk. We'll see. Not walk. Now, if you get you want places... me to walk, I was gonna say you don't live as close as I do to these theaters, but you know, <laughs> get there and watch the movies. You'll be fine. It's a fun time. Also, the Limley might be dead soon, so you gotta watch as many movies there as you can. Oh, who knows, dude? I don't know. You're my guy when it comes to anthropomorphic animals. So how are you not gonna see the bad guys and talk? It just doesn't look that interesting to me i you need gabby to see it is who you need to see it yeah, no we might never see gabby again <sighs> that's true gabby if you're out there please come back right we miss you you bring a lot of energy to this podcast it's really good yes and the furry jokes are going to be flying next week so you need to be there for them. <laughs> anyway audience let us know what you think of fantastic beast 3 and abbott elementary and you know anything just talk to us. You don't talk to us. Start talking to us. <laughs> do you think that we should uh, bury the hatchet with Greta Gerwig? Or do you think this is all a ploy? Who's we? It's just you. Fair, 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 fair. Sorry. You think that I should bury the hatchet with I statement. Uh, I statement. I'm going to say no. Keep it going. All right, Colin, just keep it going. So I'm going to keep it going. I mean, listen. <laughs> one of these days, she's going to come out with a movie that's like all black people out of nowhere. You, you are going to get her there. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'll be there. I'll buy a ticket for that one. <laughs> Greta Gerwig presents Percy Jackson. <laughs> anyway, hit us up in the comments or hit us on Twitter at y'all underscore different, Instagram and Tumblr at Creative Differences Podcast or Facebook.com slash Creative Differences PC. If you have any theories on who's actually casting the Barbie movie, let me know on Twitter or Instagram at the King Name Zimba. You can find me on Twitter at Duck McGuck. Oh, Demi's, Demi's dead. You can find Gabby on Twitter at Slytherin My Chamber. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you know. Okay. Odie with a goodie. Yeah. And that's all we got for you. It's been different. Bye. Bye. It's also very fitting because she is a Slytherin. She is a Slytherin. And, you know, she big thirsty. <laughs>